Oh, assalamu alaikum. Hey guys, we all welcome back to Samawa Ramadan Mubarak. Oh my god, yeah, guys, it's Ramadan again, and we're in the first week. So, if you are channel subscriber, thank you so much for being here. And if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. You can be part of the family by subscribing, you can become part of the family by subscribing clicking down on the subscription uh, button down below and the notification bell beside it so that you can get notified whenever a new video is being uploaded so yeah my name is Rukai Muhammad Salesu and you're all welcome back to Samawa once again so um, we are in Ramadan and the first week is already coming to an end today is 6th Ramadan I think so probably by the by the time I post this video it will be like a week after Ramadan I have planned this video to be before Ramadan but because we plan and Allah plans and his plans are the best and he is the best of planners so things didn't go to the way I planned them but here we are once again and I don't and I feel like we can still benefit from what I want to say from this video so I'm just refilling it here in Ramadan so yeah uh, we have we have entered the month of Ramadan and Ramadan is fast going like Ramadan is just going very fast it was just like yesterday we were counting days to Ramadan and today we are in the sixth day of Ramadan so guys um we are about to enter the second week of ramadan so i would like to share a few tips that i feel like they're going to help us immensely in this month of ramadan ramadan in in the month the month of ramadan is filled with abundant abundant blessings is filled with all forms of goodness that you can ever imagine and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful he wants us to benefit from these months and we have a lot of bonuses in this month of ramadan so you don't want these bonuses you don't want all this um, bonanza to go like to just go like that without you benefiting from anything out of it so I think the first thing that I would like to share with us is reflect reflect upon yourself reflect upon your actions reflect upon your uh, your interactions with people reflect upon everything around you especially from the previous Ramadan till this year what have you achieved through that span of a year what have you achieved the goals you have set yourself the previous Ramadan that you have achieved were you able to continuously keep keep uh, practicing those goals throughout the year? And now that we have reached another Ramadan, have you? Uh, are you going to keep practicing them in this Ramadan? Are you better at it, or do you want to, or or have you uh, perfected perfected them and you want to you want to achieve more goals? It's just about like really just sitting down and thinking of what you want to do because if you enter Ramadan without planning, it's not too late. You can still plan ahead because we have, I mean like 26, 20, no, we have like uh, 24 days to go or 20, 23 days to go. You can still work, to, you can still do something, you can still benefit something from it. So you're not too late. If you haven't planned anything this Ramadan, trust me, you are not too late and it's not too late for you to start, to start planning and also start implementing what you have planned. What it All it takes for you to reflect is just as I have said earlier, sit down and look at what you have achieved. Compare it, how you want, where you want to see yourself and how you want, and how you want to see yourself. So when you do that, it's going to really help you towards achieving your goals in Ramadan. And the goals that you're going to set, you have to set realistic goals, which definitely brings us to the second point. Before. Start gradually. Do not take up things that you cannot achieve. Like, uh, for example, maybe you say you're going to pray uh, 30 rakats of Nawafil during the night. You're going to be so tired and like from first Ramadan, you're, you are starting to pray. That's not even realistic, like pray, praying 30 rakats in the night you're going to be so tired that you won't even focus in the prayer or you say okay every day i'm going to read 20 pages i mean unless if you are half it even if you are half it it's okay if you don't have anything going on through the day all you can do is recite but if you if you are working and it's ramadan or you're a student and you need to read or you are or you have other activities you cannot focus and the goal for you is not just to set the quality um i mean it's not just for you to have the quantity of acts of ibadah without having meaning into it you have to invest meaning into what you're doing in putting meaning into what you're doing for example let's take for example reading reciting the quran when you're reciting the verses of the quran and you have a goal you want you have a target you have your everyday target that you want to achieve let's say for example every day i'm going to read uh two juz that's good right i mean that's uh that's okay and that's like simple well for for some people it's really simple and very easy for you within in less than an hour they can read 20 jizat right but what you want to do is if you want to really 
uh, benefit from that to that to Jesus that you're going to read you have to start to ponder upon the meaning of what you're reading right when you read a certain verse just wait for a moment read dive in dive deep into the meaning of the verse and just process and digest everything when you're doing that when you're reading something and you know the meaning of what you're reading it is on a whole new level so you have you would you would like to start gradually it's not too late for you to start doing that but you need to keep up with your pace because when you start gradually it will enable you to to have consistency throughout the month and also you won't get tired and you will not lose focus on what you're doing so the third thing is um that i'd like to share with us is help out yes we are in the month of helping we are in the month of love we are in the month of sharing ramadan is a month that consists of a lot of beautiful things that you don't want to miss so when you especially in these trying times oh my god you would want to reach out to in any littlest way you you want to you want you have or you can in any possible way the easiest or the littlest chance that you can get if you have the ability to help out please reach out to other people because this time the times are hard and people are suffering especially with the uh situation of the world well probably or more precisely in our country like back home in nigeria a lot has been going on you would want to reach out to people as much as you can but do not but do not um in the process of reaching out do not stretch your, yourself thin and i'd like to call our attention onto something before you do before you donate uh to the, to social media influencers to help out because if you don't know where to go and help anyone if you have if you if you don't have the uh means to help anyone means in ways i mean you don't know where to start looking for where to start donating where to start helping people out start within your own family your immediate family look around you who needs help it doesn't have to be your family it could be your neighbor that needs help maybe they can't afford three square meals a day please help them out no matter how little you give them it's going to really mean the world to them it's going to mean a, a whole lot to anyone and Helping out does not necessarily mean you have to give out money or you have to give somebody food or you have to feed people. No, as little as taking away anything that can bring harm along the way. That is an act of sadaqa. Like Islam has made is so so easy for us to be able to gain rewards like with the littlest things you can do just by smiling at your friend by saying by by telling someone a very good word is something like al-kalimat al-hasana if you say a very good word or a very good sentence a phrase to someone that makes them feel better that makes their day you'll have reward for it so please whenever you get the chance to help anyone whenever you get the chance to make someone smile or just make someone feel better please just pounce on it do not let it pass you uh, i think i'm going to divide this video into two parts this is the part one of the video so i think i'll upload the second part later on later on through the week or next week i'm not sure honestly depending on how things are going with me so the last but the but not the least that i want to share with you is pray please do not hesitate to pray just it's just like the helping out that i was um stressing about prayer the ramadan is the month of prayer and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one beautiful thing about him is that he loves it when we call unto him he loves it whenever we call unto him we request we, he loves it it's only a human being that gets annoyed when you're coming back to them every day for help but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never angry or he, he 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 doesn't even like it when you don't ask him he loves it when you ask him and a hand lifted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never turned down allah never turns down your request because i have a video about um how three ways that allah answers our dua first it's a yes complete yes if you ask here allah i want jannah khalas it's yes for you or you ask Allah for something and then yeah Allah I want something and then he will say okay I will give you but not now you have to wait and then the third way is you ask Allah yeah, Allah I want something and then he he will respond to you in a way that I have something better for you what you're asking it might bring harm onto you but I have something that is better for you so I'm going to give you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala when you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help he is going to help you because what we are his servant and he loves us and he loves us enough that he doesn't want to see us suffer in this world 
So when you ask him, just as I have said, uh, we have three ways that he answers. I'm just going to go into them a little bit. I have a video about that and I'm going to put the link down in the description. Oh my God, I'm talking too fast. I don't know why. Uh, I'm going to put the link down in the description box below for you guys to watch it after watching this video. So the yes, the first answer that he gives you, it's mutlaqan yes. What you're asking, he's going to give it to you. And then the second one, it's... Uh, it's yes but not now it's like yes i'll give it to you but you don't really need it right now there will be a time coming in the future that you will need it later on it will be more beneficial to you then that is when i'm going to give it to you and i've had a scenario like that in my life where like i i worked at, as an it student as a at a hospital when i was home for holiday and it was during COVID. so during lockdown we were all non-permanent staff we were released because so I went home and I was released a day to get in my paycheck. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going into Ramadan, I'm broke. Like, you know how the situation is when you're at home and you're like, it was all, everything was shut down. I didn't have any means of income. So I was like, oh my God, I'm somehow broke. But I was at home, I have a plate, I have a roof over my head. I have a plate on my table and everything. Like, I don't need anything. The money that I need is just for extra, you know, to buy a recharge card or, or anything. So. I was like, yeah, Allah, I really need this money now. And we were released, so, and I went, I don't know when we'll be called back. So, khalas, I let it go. We spent Ramadan without getting that paycheck and everything. So when I went, after the lockdown was, uh, you know, called off, so I went back to work. And I got double salary for that previous month and the month that I went back and I worked. And it came to me like I had like, like I got a double salary and I was like Alhamdulillah and it came just before Eid before before what yeah before Eid al-Adha and I needed the money most then because you know when it's Eid you're always needing money you're you're always doing you're always into different things and I was like subhanallah and Allah knew that I did not need the money in Ramadan because and perhaps maybe if I had gotten the money and you know I have recharged my phone, I'll just while away my time, just surfing around the internet, just surfing around social media and all. But the money came to me at the time that I needed is the I needed it the most, and I thanked Allah for that. And then so the third option is no, I have something different for you. Yes, I know what you're asking might bring harm to you. It's not beneficial. I have something that is better for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not turn down our request in whatever form. So even if you feel like your prayer is not being answered, trust me, your prayer is answered. And no matter how long it takes for you to see the result of your prayer, just keep praying. And one more thing about prayer is even if you don't see the result of your prayer in this life, in the Akhirah, it is a huge reward for you because Allah knows that you were patient. You have prayed for certain for a particular thing and you're patient even though you didn't get it. So he's going to reward you immensely. So do not hesitate to, to raise your hands over to Allah. And one beautiful thing about prayer is you can just do it in at any time, at any moment of your life. Allah will answer Allah will answer your request. Pray harder because this is the month of prayer, especially towards the uh, so towards iftar time, do not play with these times. There are times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer our, answers our dua. Like these times, they are, these times are, are golden for prayer. So uh, it's, a few of them are during iftar and during sahur time, yeah, just before fajr and just before iftar. These two times, especially just before iftar, there's a mistake that some people make. They like, or listen to Quran or recite the Quran till iftar. Please don't make that mistake. Reciting the Quran in Ramadan is beautiful. It's amazing because it's the month of Ramadan. But, but during iftar, come on, it is a golden time. But during iftar, your prayers are being answered. Like it's a golden time for prayer. So do not hesitate to, to joke with that time. Pray as much, pray for whatever it is you need, pray for whatever it is you want Allah to grant you, pray during that time. And I think, uh, and also during Sahur, just the last uh, the last uh, part of the night is golden, we all know that. And also um, after every Adhan, after any call to prayer, that time when you pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers your prayer. And whenever or maybe there are other times that it was reported from the Prophet, he stated that if you are shivering or you are scared and or you are scared and do ask Allah something or you pray unto Allah, He will answer your prayers. So 
And let's not forget to include our beloved dear country in our prayers because what is happening back home, it is so disheartening that we cannot say anything other than pray. We have to call on to Allah, He is our only Savior. And let's keep repeating, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil because He is the only one who can, who can, who can come to our aid no matter not even blaming the government or those blames and everything yes it is disheartening seeing what is happening but if we keep praying harder i believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to our aid people of kaduna people of the northern part of nigeria we are with you and we're still praying and let's not forget our brothers and sisters and our families and our friends that are held in captivity as well let's um, let's keep praying for them that allah saves them from any kind of infliction or any kind of uh, shock that may come through their way and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep protecting them. The stories going on online, they are not easy to digest, they are not easy to process, they are not easy just by reading them. So imagine what they're going through if you cannot, if it can take a toll on you just reading them, it can make you feel depressed. Just imagine what the victims are going through. Let's please include, include them in our prayers, in our daily prayers. And with that, I have come to the end of this video and let's not forget to give it a thumbs up if you like the video and comment down below whatever it is you want to add to the video or if you have anything you want to add or ask or anything, just put them down in the comment section and don't forget to share with your friends and family if you enjoy the video. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak and also Iftar Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum.